Do you know there's a prophetic word that says the prophet Elijah must first come before the Lord Jesus Christ? Now, hi, good day. My name is Stanley. I'm a preacher and minister in South Africa. Now, today I want to talk to you about this prophetic utterance that we find in the book of Malachi about the prophet Elijah that must first come before the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, even his disciples made mention of this prophecy when he was on earth. But let us read the prophetic word in the book of Malachi, and we can read it from verses 5. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord, and he will turn the hearts of the fathers to the, to the children, and the hearts of the children to their fathers, lest I come and strike the earth with a curse. Now this is the prophetic utterance that says Elijah must first come and turn the hearts of the fathers to their children and the children to their fathers. In other words, the purpose of Elijah that is to come according to this prophetic word is for people to repent and to reconcile with one another, lest the Lord will strike the earth with a curse. Now, before I'm going to explain this prophetic word from the New Testament, let us first find out what, who was Elijah and what he did that this anticipation in the Christian church are still there. Because there's still this anticipation that says now that there's a prophetic word that says Elijah must first come before the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, if you go and read in 1 Kings 17 and 1 Kings 18, now, Elijah was a prophet in the Old Testament, and he mainly ministered in the time of Ahab. Now, Ahab was the most wicked and evil king in the entire history of Israel, because his wife Jezebel deceived him and stirred him up to, uh, do, uh, to, to, do, to do idol worship and to turn his back on the one and true only God that led Israel out of Egypt. Now, Elijah was a prophet sent by God to go and minister against Ahab and to call his sin out and to tell him how, he sin, how sinful he is and to repent from his sin. But there was a time that God said to Elijah, he must pray that there will be a drought in Israel. So it happened three and a half years. There was an extreme, a severe drought in Israel. And there was, uh, there was a time after this time that God said to Elijah that he will send rain. And, God, and Elijah went and prayed. And so God sent the rain. But before the rain came, there was something that Elijah had to do. So he went to the king Ahab. And he said to him, they must gather all the Baal prophets. Because at that stage... Um, Israel was worshipping Baal because King Ahab was worshipping Baal uh, because of his wife stirring up to do so, etc. So the entire nation was under Baal worship. Idolatry. Isn't it correct? Now, Elijah came and said, they must gather all the Baal prophets and they must decide after this thing that he will tell them to do. They must decide whether they want to serve Baal or the one and only true God. So the purpose of this challenge that Elijah gave them was for them to decide which God they must serve. So what happened, Elijah came and said they must gather this 400 Baal prophets and they must prepare sacrifice and he will also prepare a sacrifice and the God that answers from heaven with fire will be the only true God. The, true God. They weren't allowed to light the sacrifice. They weren't allowed to kindle a fire out of themselves to burn the sacrifice. They must call upon their God, and when their God uh, um, answers with fire from heaven, that will be the true God. So it happened 
that a Baal prophet started their sacrifice, their rituals. They even cut them with spears, spears and swords until the, uh, the, 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 the blood came out and gushed out of the flesh and out of this uh, cuts they made, etc. But Elijah mocked them and said, you must call harder. Maybe he's on leave. Maybe he's asleep. <laughs> so he mocked him the whole day where they were doing their rituals for this uh, Baal God to answer with fire. And the next moment, Elijah prepared his sacrifice and he called upon God. And all of a sudden, the fire from heaven came down and he destroyed all the sacrifice. His sacrifice as well as the Baal sacrifice. There was a lot of water around the sacrifices as Elijah uh, uh, said to them, they must do. And they poured water and water. The water, everything was destroyed and there was nothing left of the sacrifice. So, so Elijah went in slaughter at, Cal at Carmel, 400 Baal prophets. Now there was another instance as well when, uh, um, they, when, when, when Ahab called for Elijah and uh, he, he sent his mighty soldiers, 50 of them, to Elijah. And Elijah said to him, if I'm a prophet of God, let fire come down from, come down from heaven and consume you. And he did twice. And the second, the third time, it didn't happen. Because the third time, this soldier came and he, he begged Elijah and said, please, Elijah, uh, have mercy on my life and those with me. Okay. And after that, God sent rain again after he destroyed and rooted out the Baal prophets. But in that still, the Ahab and the majority and mostly all of Israel didn't repent. Even, if God, even when God answered with fire from heaven, Israel didn't repent from their Baal worship. Now, let's go back to the prophetic word. The purpose of Elijah that is to come, that is, this is still according to this prophecy, is, is to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the children to the fathers. In other words, there must be reconciliation. And what separates us from each other? What separates us from God? Now, Isaiah 59 is very clear. Our sin, our wickedness separates us from God. And if, if we are separated from God, there can be no reconciliation in the flesh. We can uh, make reconciliation. We can say we are reconciled. But, uh, but are we really reconciled with each other? Most of the time, it's just in the outward that we gather together with family, etc. But our hearts isn't reconciled with God. And if it's not reconciled with God, it is not true reconciliation. Okay. Now, when we jump over to the New Testament, there is a prophetic word um, of John the Baptist. Now, the New Testament, and that is so powerful. Let us read quickly here in, in Mark 1. Verses 1, the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, as it is written in the prophets. In other words, the beginning of the ministry of Jesus Christ started with John the Baptist. Isn't that powerful? Now, when God met with Zechariah's uh, father, he was a priest at that stage, and um, Zechariah was busy with his priestly duties and an angel met with him and an angel gave Zechariah a prophetic word because Zechariah and his wife Elizabeth, they were still, uh, they, they, they were at old age and they couldn't get children. So the angel came to, the, came to Zechariah while he was busy in the temple to tell him that you will have a child and you must call this child John. And the next moment the angel said, uh, this to uh, Zechariah. This is in Luke 1 verses 17. He will also go before him in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the father to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just to make ready the people and prepare uh, a, a people prepared for the Lord. Now verses 15 says the following 
He says, For he will be great in the sight of the Lord, and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink. He will also be filled with the Holy Spirit, even from his mother's womb. And he will turn many of the children of Israel to the Lord their God. Now this is a 100% um, prophetic fulfillment of what we have read in Malachi. Isn't it so? He will Turn the hearts of the children to watch each other and to the Lord. And this is the power and uh, of Elijah. And we can see here, it's about the Holy Spirit. Now, when we read at the, uh, when we read further, um, after the birth of John the Baptist, there was also a prophetic word from his father over um, uh, John the Baptist. And let us read a portion of this prophetic word. And you, child, will be called the prophet of the highest, for you will go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation to his people by the remission of their sins. Now the remission is forgiveness of their sins through the tender mercies of our God. We, uh, with which the day spring from on high has visited us to give light to those who sit in darkness and the shadow of death to guide our feet into the way of peace. Real peace, not man-made and outward peace. Real peace from the heart. Because if you have peace in your heart, real peace from God, we can be reconciled with Him and with each other. Now we can see that John the Baptist, the prophetic word, he was filled with the Holy Spirit. And God says in the prophetic word that um, Elijah will come and John will come in the power and spirit of Elijah. Now this is where the problem comes in. Because even if we read in uh, the book of, uh, of Matthew, uh, uh, Matthew 11 and even in Matthew 17, from verses 10, Jesus Christ says that John the, John the Baptist was the uh, prophesied Elijah that was to come. Now, a lot of people think that Elijah, and when it is preached and anticipated that, uh, that Elijah will come, people say that he comes with his spirit. It is as if Elijah had, these, uh, had this power that, and the fire that came from heaven, etc., as if it is was Elijah himself, his own life and his own spirit. And so it is preached. But so far we've read in the New Testament that it is all about the power of the Holy Spirit. Now let's read in the book of James. And remember what was the purpose of John the Baptist? Is to bring knowledge in the forgiveness of of sin, if they, this, if sin is removed, then our hearts can be truly reconciled with God, because it is sin, it is wickedness that separates us from God, and that was the purpose of Elijah was to, uh, in, in the outward, to remove this wickedness, to remove the Baal prophet, uh, prophets, so that Israel can be reconciled with God. But they still, even after that, and uh, that. Great great miracle that God did and they feared when it happened the entire Israel feared but their hearts were so hard they still refused to repent from their Baal worship and the sins that was connected to this Baal worship but let us read in the book of James verses 17 now this is powerful and this is the key to unlock a lot of things he says in verses 17 from James 5 Elijah was a man with a nature like ours. He was a man, Elijah was a man exactly like us. <laughs> and he prayed earnestly that it, did, that it would rain, and it did not rain on the land for three years and six months. And prayed again, and the heaven gave rain, and the earth produced its fruit. Now the word of God says clearly, Elijah was a man like you and me. The difference is he earnestly seek God. He seek God with his entire life to, to the extent that he refused to have communion and to take 
part in the pleasures of world of this world and to be a Baal worshippers. He distanced distant himself from everything in this world, the luxury of this world, the material wealth of this world. That's how his heart was was God, that I will refuse all materialistic things just to gain God in my life. And that is why he was taken to heaven. He was taken to heaven and he never saw death. He was taken alive to heaven. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. But what is more, even more powerful, when we read from verses 13, and we can see the context in which this is written, that Elijah is a man just like us. He says in verses 16, Confess therefore your trespasses to one another and pray for another one, one another that you may be healed. The effective fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. So God says before prayer can be powerful like the prayer of Elijah, we need to confess our sins. We need to be separated from our sins. Hallelujah. Then the Spirit of God, which is not outward anymore, but inward the fire and the power of God remove the sin. It destroys the Baal and the idol worship in our lives. Isn't that powerful and glorious? Hallelujah. Now let's go back to the baptism of John the Baptist. And this is also so powerful when we read what was the purpose of John the Baptist um, uh, uh, baptism. Now when we read in uh, uh, Mark 1, and we're going to read from verses 2. Uh, um, As it is written in the prophets, Behold, I sent my messenger before your face, who will prepare your way before you. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord and make his straight path. What? When we look at John the Baptist, how did he prepare the way of the Lord Jesus Christ to come? And, 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 and we must understand, it was the first coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, not the second coming, because Malachi was still written in the Old Testament, so the prophetic word, Elijah will come before Jesus Christ came the very first time on earth. It's not about the second coming, the prophetic word that is uttered in Malachi. Now, how did John prepare this way for the Lord Jesus Christ? And this is a glorious thing if you can understand it today. John came baptizing in the wilderness and preaching a baptism of repentance for the remissions of sins. So the purpose of his baptism was for the repentance and remission of sins. So the people had to repent and, and therefore their sins would be forgiven. Let's read verses 5. Then all the land of Judea and those from Jerusalem went out to him and were all baptized by him in the Jordan, confessing their sins. Praise the Lord. This is what James taught us in James 5 from 13 to verses 17 that he says the one who confesses his sins uh, hallelujah will have an effective powerful prayer in the Lord Jesus Christ there uh, because the confession of sins makes that God forgives your sins and this was the purpose of John the Baptist there uh, now it's not about the outward fire anymore it's about the Holy Spirit because John the Baptist even priests and said the one that comes after me will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. You cannot see this, receive the Holy Spirit and fire without repentance, without confessing your sins. Hallelujah. Nowadays people get baptized as children and, and even as adults, just baptizing them and say, now your sins are forgiven. No, there must be a repentance. There must be a confessing of sins. Then the remission, the forgiveness comes through and then the power, your prayer and the one praying for you has an, a powerful effect. Uh, hallelujah! But now the Lord Jesus Christ says even they re didn't recognize John the Baptist. 
Therefore they killed him. Therefore they beheaded him. Therefore the religious leaders resisted him. They didn't acknowledge John the Baptist because there wasn't outward signs and wonders. And, and, and humanity is like that. And this is what we read in 1 Corinthians as well. The people are seeking signs and wonders and philosophical wisdom. But the power of God comes through the forgiveness of sins. If there is no forgiveness of sins, the barrier between us and God. Uh, hallelujah. The division between us and God is not removed if we don't confess our sins because this is what removes us from God. I don't care from what is your heritage. I don't care what is your religion today. You must confess and repent and accept the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. When you accept the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, He comes into your heart and He removes you from your Baal worship. He removes you from your old life, from your old religions, from your old thinking, from your old traditions, and we remove that sin. And that is why John the Baptist, even even they, there wasn't outward signs and wonders. The signs and wonders was inward. Now the signs and wonders is inward. Hallelujah. And if you are forgiven with, uh, if your sins are forgiven, you come out of the land of darkness, the shadow of death. Uh, hallelujah. Because if you're still caught up in sin and you're not spiritually reborn, as Jesus Christ said it to Nicodemus in John 3, if you're not reborn, you can not receive the fire of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. And this is now a tendency in the Christian church. They just want to be baptized. They just want to feel good. Eh? And now they are, 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 are gathering together to call fire down from heaven. They are gathered together to have feelings and, and to have emotional hype. Eh? Hallelujah. Because the Spirit of God isn't in the heart from preacher uh, to the, the, to the uh, congregation. The Spirit isn't there anymore more because there's no confession of sins. There's no repentance because the word of God says in John 16 verses 8, uh, it says that the Holy Spirit are there to convict us of our sin and of judgment and of righteousness uh, because uh, when you receive the Holy Spirit you must be convicted of your sin so you can understand uh, that and be removed from the judgment that are to come after the Lord Jesus Christ uh, and so that you can do the righteousness of of God in Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So that is the power of the Holy Spirit. And this is what John preached uh, in, in that spirit because it wasn't Elijah's own spirit because Elijah was a man like me and you. Hallelujah. But the spirit of God that was, that was manifested outwardly in the time of Elijah are now manifested inwardly in our heart to set us free from sin, to set us free from wickedness and so we can be reconciled with God and to every single person that receives the Lord Jesus Christ in the spiritual rebirth. Now we are a new family of God in Christ, in Jesus Christ. Uh, and if the Holy Spirit, and if you are in a church or in a place uh, and they say, here's the Holy Spirit and that Holy Spirit they're talking about doesn't convict you of sin and judgment and righteousness. It's not the power of God. Uh, hallelujah because the power of God must convict us and if you are convicted with your, of your sin then you can confess that uh, and that is what repentance means you must confess it you must cry out you must tear your heart uh, you must have a broken heart uh, and in this day when you can have this broken heart and you can call upon God and say Lord please come into my life uh, forgive my life of sin uh, make me a spiritual new person give me a new heart remove this old heart of stone in me, then the power and the glory of God will come into your life uh, and make you a new person. And then the fire and the power of God is within you. It is streams of living water coming from within. People are waiting for an outside manifestation of the Holy Spirit. No, it's not going to come. And people that are preaching mainly to have an outward uh, experience of the Holy Spirit are not busy with the true and one Holy Spirit because there's a false spirit in the church at this time that are just seeking of the experiences, the signs and wonders, but the true spirit convicts us of our sins so that we can repent from that, confess that, uh, hallelujah, and so can have a spiritual rebirth. Then the water comes within, from within to the outside and that's
sight from the outside to within. Hallelujah. If we are seeking, seeking signs and wonders and we are saying that Elijah must still come, we are preaching and teaching against the teaching of our Lord Jesus Christ because he is very clear in the book of Matthew. When we look at Matthew 6, uh, 17 and, uh, and Matthew 11, he says in Matthew 11 verses 14, and if you are willing to receive, he is Elijah to come. Uh, hallelujah. And he was talking about John the Baptist. Uh, now in Matthew 17, he is saying that it once again, and his disciple asked him, saying, "Why do you? Why then do the scribes say that Elijah must first come?" Jesus answered, said to them, "Indeed, Elijah is coming first and will restore all things. But I say to you, Elijah has come already, and they did not know him, but did to him whatever they wished. Likewise, the Son of Man is also about to." To suffer uh, to the hands of uh, to their hands, and then the disciples understood that he spoke to them of John the Baptist. So if we are preaching and say Elijah must still come, and the mantle of Elijah and all this outward appearing, we preach against the word of God, and we must have our foundation built on the teaching and the word of our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, and we, if we are teaching against this and say Elijah must still come, it's about the outward things. We are not built building a spiritual house on the foundation because then we reject the teaching of our Lord Jesus Christ. So it isn't, isn't it powerful to understand the Spirit and everyone can receive it. Uh, Elijah was a human just like you, but he repented. He didn't take part of the sin of this world. And so the Word of God says we must separate our heart and we must start worshiping in our heart. And you cannot do it without, uh, within yourself, but you need God and the Holy Spirit. And if you repent, truly repent and cry out to the Lord, He will come and circumcise your heart and give you the spiritual rebirth. Isn't that absolutely powerful? Hallelujah. Are you ready to confess your sins? Are you ready to repent from your previous life to have an eternal inheritance? May you have an awesome and blessed day and spiritful day in the Lord. Amen.